another episode of Carolyn Talks Television. I'm Carolyn Topol, and I'm here with my fabulous, ooh, fabulous, fabulous <laughs> co-host Rachel Arnett. Hi, everyone. And Rachel and I have a special holiday episode we're doing now. Last year's holiday episode, we were out and about asking a lot of people what they liked. It's too cold this year. I'm like, I'm not doing it. Okay. <laughs> going out Last there. Last year, we were having a lot of heat waves. Yeah. This year, we're having frost waves. So we're no, doing it you. inside the studio. <laughs> but the same holds true. Everybody I've even spoken to or chatted mm-hmm. with, no matter who they are, talks about the same thing. Gotta watch the Hallmark movies. It's all about Hallmark. It's a constant discussion in my house between my mom and me about the different ones we've seen or the ones I've missed, but it's okay because they're all on the DVR. Every single one. (laughs) The old ones, the new ones, they're all there. Okay. I'm watching as many as I possibly can. (laughs) Um, I've never been binge-watched Hallmark movies before. (laughs) You might need to start. (laughs) But but I am deleting them after Uh, I watch them. I'm not allowed to delete them because she rewatches them when there's nothing else on. Okay. So now, (laughs) first of all, There are two Hallmark channels in our Mm -hmm. area. If you have your basic cable systems, you have the Hallmark channel, and then you have Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Mm -hmm. The difference during the holiday season is the basic Hallmark channel will give you light and fluffy two-hour movies. It's Mm -hmm. light and fluffy the whole way. Um, Just like the snow falling from the sky. (laughs) Very cute, especially since they tape in the summer. Yeah, exactly. Um, and <laughs> that's, good. that's true. Yeah. Um, and then the mystery channel, m- movies and mysteries, mm-hmm. they actually ends up throwing in a tad of angst throughout the movie. <laughs> a little bit of Christmas angst. Christmas angst, which lasts about 12 seconds. Go to a commercial, come back, they'll fix it. You can always count on the one thing in these movies is you will never leave the movie sad. Because there's always a happy, warm, fuzzy ending. Mm -hmm. So if anything's getting you down, if shopping and having people shove you to the side is bugging you, (laughs) turn on a Hallmark movie. You cannot leave these without having this... (sighs) Even when they're cheesy, you're just like, okay, I see you, but I like it. (laughs) And by the way, anybody who's seen one, raise your hands. Come on. I know you're all out there. Raise your hands. I have a series of hands. Yes. Uh, you know that every single one of these movies is the definition by every dictionary on the planet of formulaic. Oh, 100%. You, you're going to start with some sort of interesting Christmas twist of some sort that might bring a little drama into the picture. A little meet cute here and there. Yeah. Usually secondary characters also falling in love. Yes, Which yes. is like a newer theme this year, which I like. Yeah, and secondary characters actually having a story. Yeah, which is very new. Which is really fun, because yeah. it kind of gives you something else to look at. Especially um, if the main characters are not particularly interesting, which, yeah, sometimes it happens. Yeah. Not one, not all the time. I like my heroes and heroines, but Which you know you'll always end yeah. with everybody is falling in love, mm-hmm. or smiling, or happy, or is back where they belong, and it's like going back to the Wizard of Oz, there's no place like home. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of an ending. You're going to feel that feeling at the end of each of these movies, Uh, unless, of course, you're really cold-hearted, and then I'm so sorry because then this (laughs) won't hurt. This will not go for you, but everybody on the planet that I know can't help watching these and saying, Okay, that put me in a nice, relaxed mood. Absolutely. And if you don't feel that way, then watch The Grinch, because there's some lessons that you can learn from that movie, so you can enjoy these movies. There you go. Right? There you go. And once you're out of Whoville, come on back. Exactly. Go back to Hallmark. So let's start with some of the new things coming up that actually have built on previous years. You Mm -hmm. and I both talked about a series that actually took place over three years starting with a series called Finding Father Christmas. Yes. Which I thought was fascinating. Um, it was, this was on the movies and mysteries because it was a bit of a twist of a mystery where somebody never knew the true identity of her father mm-hmm. and never had anything to do with this family, but suddenly discovers that maybe there's some mystery in a town 
after she discovers the belongings of her mother when her mom passes away. Mm -hmm. And she goes back to this town and discovers the true identity of a father that her mother had been involved with years earlier. Yes. And um, so this was, you know, this is a little bit... uh, Risque for Hallmark there. <laughs> for Hallmark. For Hallmark. <laughs> Not for anything family, else, but yeah. But for Hallmark. Yeah. <laughs> and discovers a new family and, of course, falls mm-hmm. in love. But does have a romance, but they're going to try to do it separate locations. This is going to be long distance. Mm-hmm. Until last year, when she returns for Christmas again, which is the happy time mm-hmm. and the time she found this new family. And then becomes engaged. And then we had engaging Father Christmas. Yes. And then this year, they did marrying Father Christmas. Oh, my God. It was so sweet and so cute. And you had your warm, fuzzy ending. But yeah. it was three years in the making. You weren't which sure. Is, which is very unusual for Hallmark. Mm-hmm. E- any one of them could have been a standalone movie, really. Yes. And that was something that I found interesting. They never, This is pretty ambitious for Hallmark, which is usually that, like... Two and a half, two two and a half hour formula, get it done, signed, sealed, delivered, and they really push themselves. I think. And there's a couple of them that have done that, where mm-hmm. they've they've continued stories. Um, usually, Hallmark has done that with their regular Hallmark movies. Yes, they did a whole series of them this year where they went back um, and showed the weddings of the couples that previously fell in love in the other movies. Right. Yeah. Right. So I mean, they're really taking a step forward though, doing this now almost making it annual. Um, There are others they did this with, but I'm going to talk about some of them later. You and I discovered we had a favorite that was Journey Back to Christmas by, I think, um, Candace Cameron Bure, I believe has done the most in terms of single actress Christmas movies for Hallmark. I wouldn't be surprised. At, at This season, I've seen her in at least three previews. Right. And sometimes they have Candace Cameron Bure like back to back. In the movies. And now, and she also does the previews. Yes. Now. She's also doing some of the preview shows for the Christmas <laughs> movies. So she even did a preview show that was 30 minutes yep. long for the Hallmark channels, sharing what the movies were to come. Um, now, we have Candace Cameron Bure in Journey Back to Christmas. I loved this movie. I, I, so I have to be honest, I didn't really like it at first. Okay. I thought... I was expecting the typical romance formula, and so I kind of got used to it. So when it deviated from that, and I couldn't figure out what was going on and who was going to fall in love with who, it kind of threw me off, and I wasn't sure I liked it. But by the end, I actually really appreciated that it was kind of like a female empowerment, like not about the romance movie. I kind of liked that. And the the idea of it, which was interesting, was a little, it was almost like Hallmark meets Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. That was what my brain said to me, which is yeah. giving Hallmark a big pat on the back for yeah, comparing it to Back to the Future, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, but basically, uh, she plays a woman from 1945, 46 mm-hmm. period of time. Who's a nurse. Who was a nurse mm-hmm. and whose husband, and spoiler alert, presumed dead. Okay, we find out later. It'll be a happy ending. It's always going to be a happy ending, guys. Yes. Um, but her husband is presumed dead in World mm-hmm. War II. And she's sad, and it's Christmas time back in the 40s. Mm-hmm. Um, and her best friends, you know, are supportive of her. And one of them says something which is one of the things I thought was fascinating about a stone and a ripple in the water. Just one little stone can cause the ripples in mm-hmm. the water. Which is, I remember that idea from Pocahontas, too, really stuck with me as a child when Grandmother Willow put her leaf yeah. in the water and the ripples. I don't know. That image always sticks with me. And it's, it is, it has become an image of empowerment mm-hmm. because it talks about how one small person, one small moment in their lives can impact so mm-hmm. much more, even though they wouldn't know it. Mm-hmm. Due to a bizarre set of circumstances and a strange comet that comes once every 71 years or something like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> how coincidental. <laughs> how, how coincidental. She is brought into the future, Mm -hmm. into 2016 or 17. I believe the movie was from last year or the year before. And suddenly she's thrown into her town Mm -hmm. 
And, and she doesn't know where anything is. Things are wrong. And, you know, it has a lot of the classic comic person out of their time tropes. Like, what's a cell phone? What is this loud noise? A dog? Like, there's, you know, there's a lot of that. Well, and but like they play Ugg, it very well. I love when they show her Ugg boots. Yes. That was one of my favorite moments when she calls them bedroom slippers. Yes. <laughs> because that's how I think about Uggs. Just say. Just say. You're allowed. But it's, it's truly taking a person out of their element. And then... You think, oh, is she going to fall in love with the person she meets in modern times? And this will be weird. And I, it, it, that was the part yeah. I bet you weren't thrilled with. Yeah. It, it just felt like an odd choice to take someone out of their time to the future to fall in love, knowing that eventually, given the type of movie it is, that they were going to have to go back in time. If she was going to be truly yeah. happy. Because she, yeah. she was truly out of her element and never truly in her element. Yeah. And it all takes place during Christmas week. Ultimately, it becomes a very interesting um, pseudo mystery mm-hmm. as the town does start to believe her story that she really is mm-hmm. from the past. And she actually meets someone who knew her then, mm-hmm. who was a little boy at the time, and does remember her and helps her truly find her way back. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but before she goes, she sees some of those ripple effects from little things she did yeah. that have impacted in a very positive way the community 70 plus years later. Yeah. I thought that was a very powerful message because I know, in, you know, even in Jewish lore, they tell all these stories about planting seeds for trees that you'll never eat the fruit of. And I just think that that's always a very powerful idea that the things that you do now you may not get to see the positive end results, but you work and you try mm-hmm. and good things can happen for your children, for your children's children. I've just kind of always loved that idea. And so I would strongly, strongly recommend, if you don't watch any other of these Hallmark holiday mm-hmm. movies, I'm sure it will be repeated several <laughs> times. Three and- times today. <laughs> it's, <laughs> fine. it's fine. But if you type in yeah. Journey Back 2, you'll find it and find the one, because uh, that's a title that is used a lot, Journey Back, mm-hmm. um, that incorporates Candace Cameron Bure. And you will find a very interesting movie that's a little more creative and less of the formulaic. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things I've loved about it, is that it was a little out of the box. Um, See, one of my favorites was so in that box. It, it, it basically it. built the box. Okay. <laughs> so no, um, one, one of my favorites is Ice Sculpture Christmas. And that's from a couple of years ago. And it was just charming. Like, there, there's no other word for it, really. The two leads that were cast in it, I'll be honest, I don't know either of their names. I'm sorry. Um, they were just really sweet and had really charming chemistry. And it was quirky acting. It wasn't the typical... Um, or stereotypical, like, I'm in love with you, I'm in love with you, and the angst, like, it was, it right. felt really centered in real-world problems, and the ice sculptures were really cool, too. <laughs> and I don't know, it just it just really worked for me as a movie that I would watch over and over again, really lighthearted, funny, and I don't know, I just, I could watch it every day. You know, when they add the funny twists, yeah, I think that's a good part of it. Because one of the nice things you get with Hallmark is you get humor. Mm -hmm. And it's light humor. Everything about the shows is light. It's fun. You're going to relax. You might get a chuckle. Um, I know one of the things that my husband has joked about is he said, if you ever want to go to sleep and know you're going to have pleasant (laughs) dreams, watch a Hallmark movie as you're heading to sleep. Because you can't help going to bed with a relaxed sense of peace and it's just nice yeah. it's just nice now interestingly i've dragged him into it i have dragged him in kicking and screaming but i dragged him in to start with but the funny part is while he he chats a bit makes some <laughs> remarks about okay when is it time for this and this to happen uh oh now's the time they're going to break up for five minutes yeah. <laughs> he Identif- identifying the formulaic twists and the yes. plot patterns, yeah. But while he's doing that, he's not leaving the room. He's sitting and yeah, watching he's with me. Snarky with a smile. <laughs> Snarky with a smile and appreciative. Yeah. 
Um, there, there's something in us that like reacts a little snarky when we see these formulaic elements, but we can't stop watching. They're so. I, mean, I sit there and I make like, okay, here comes the gratuitous Christmas carol scene. I know it's coming, <laughs> but I, I still sing along with it. <laughs> like, I recognize it. I still love it. And the other part is, I don't think I'd be alone in saying this has been a really stressful year for a lot of people. <laughs> A lot. Um, the globe. The, the, the global world, the news, has been very, very challenging. So if you could literally turn to a channel that is all about the fluffy and leaving their real world so far out of it. Oh, yeah. There's no car- there are no current events. There's just <laughs> pumpkin carving contests, ice sculpture carving contests. Uh, yeah, exactly. And those are like the and most... Gingerbread bu- and gingerbread And gingerbread houses. <laughs> gingerbread Lots of competitions. Houses. Lots of like food-related competitions and yeah, culinary. Yeah, good guy always wins. So yeah, it's okay. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> good guy will always win. That's the other piece. Or someone cheats, but then that cheating is exposed, which brings the two characters together. <laughs> okay. So that that's, works. Yeah, every once in a while. The good guy will always win. Just trust exactly. me. Exactly. <laughs> always trust win. Trust me. And when, we you need need to, when, when you need to just get away from the real world that's been so intense and mm-hmm. borderline depressing at times, you know, making people just... Very feel like anxious, very just, heavy. Then this is a way to truly relax. They found it. And mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons we're finding Hallmark so successful. Mm-hmm. Um, another series that was only two pieces to this, there may be more because they've opened, left that door open, was Christmas in Evergreen. And this is one I haven't seen. Okay. Christmas in Evergreen takes place in a town where... It's small town. It's all about Christmas. They are mm-hmm. just everything about it. And the first, uh, the first component, the first movie, I should say, was last year, and it was about a veterinarian who was going to move to D.C. to be with her um, boyfriend, long-term boyfriend. They were going to see if they could make it work as a couple. But she realizes she really wants to be in her hometown. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the central pieces in this hometown is in the diner that her parents own is a snow globe a holiday snow globe that people do wishes on and one of the uh urban legends in their town Mm -hmm. is that the wishes come true oh cool okay Um, i might have to see this (laughs) you've got me at wishes and snow globes and the the wishes are very creative they're not all the same different people have wishes Mm -hmm. Um, there's also a guy who lives in town who has a very, very full white beard. His name's Nick. He actually plays the Santa every year. Santa. No subtlety oh. in this Hallmark movie. <laughs> Not at no. all. So there's a guy with a long white beard called Nick. Nick. I wonder if he might have Santa-like powers. I don't know. Who knows? But he seems <laughs> to know things a lot more than others. Hmm. Does he so. have any reindeer? <laughs> Did they go that far? You know, <laughs> oh no, the new component seems to be moving that way, but we yeah, don't actually see yeah. it. He's not act. It's not actually that much in your face, but it's enough in your face that we're okay you're like, with it. okay, I get it. <laughs> um, so she had her romance. She stays in town. Someone else is stuck in town, and she becomes involved with this mm-hmm. guy who's a doctor. They need a new doctor in town, and he is widowed within the past year, a couple mm-hmm. of years, whatever. Has a daughter. And they're lead- we know that they're going to head to their happily ever after. She's staying in Evergreen, and he's going to move to Evergreen with his daughter. Mm. Wonderful, nice, it's lovely. And it's just the beginning of the romance was how it ended last year's movie. Okay. This year's movie, which was just on yesterday, and I made sure to watch it because I knew we would be seeing mm-hmm. it. And granted, you will see it a few weeks in, so just look for the Evergreen If you type in Evergreen and Hallmark comes up, you'll find both of them. It's called Christmas in Evergreen, Letters to Santa. Sounds ridiculous. It's like, oh, what are we going to do? Have this, you know. Sleepless in Seattle letter to. You know, one or more and more letters. And is this an anthology or what is it? No, no, no. It's another whole story. And literally every secondary character, some of whom had secondary stories like Mm -hmm. you were talking about, several who had secondary stories, are also brought back. Every secondary character in this movie is brought back. This woman's parents, everybody's brought back. She doesn't come back until the last half hour of the movie, the original. The original couple. The original oh, couple. Cool. And even he is never seen on camera, but that they missed Evergreen, so they came back, even though they were going to originally celebrate 
Christmas with his family in Florida. They can't bear to be back, but only we see her. We don't see the long-term boyfriend is what he's called now, the boyfriend and the daughter on screen at all because they're not the focus two characters. And it's about a letter that's discovered that was written like 40 years back or 30 years mm. back. It's, it's fascinating. That's a cool idea how they kind of kept the same world. Exactly. It's, it's something that they, I don't think, have done with any other movie where they kind of go back to this world that they've already created and say there are more stories to tell. Around different people. Around different people, yeah. Which I've read some book series that are like that, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. So now I kind of want to check out Evergreen because I like returning to universes that exist. And the neat thing was, yeah. all those secondary characters were there. And I thought it was really well done enough that this is one of those moments where I got a chuckle. My husband, who was, you know, talking about and ragging on the movies in the background, says, weren't those people in the other movie we saw about this place? <laughs> I said, yes, yes they were. As That's a matter of fact. the point. <laughs> and the fact that you've even paid attention enough to notice mm -hmm. sent me a message yep. that Hallmark is getting across to more people than who would even like to probably confess that they're watching. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it's funny. My dad is outspoken. He calls Hallmark the Nancy Channel. It's my mom's name. He's sent, oh, oh, he the sent Nancy the Nancy Channel. Channel. <laughs> He sent me numerous pictures of remotes with every button taped except the hall, the one for Hallmark, and it goes right to Hallmark and says, Mom's remote when she's older. And I get it. Like he, He's got like the polite disdain, but he sits down and watches it too. And, and he, you know, he makes the snarky comments, but then at the end, he's a little tear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're sweet. They you, are sweet. We just need, we need a little sweet. And, and if you go into expecting a Hallmark movie to be a life-changing film experience you're on the wrong channel. like it's just not designed for that it's designed to feel good i mean i i don't want to say this negatively about hallmark but they're not making these movies to get emmy recognition no these are not good movies these are good movies these are entertaining movies these are entertaining movies yeah. and you could count on certain actors and actresses to be in different movies playing completely different roles in mm -hmm. completely different towns um like we talked about candace cameron Bure. Mm -hmm. Um, another actress who's been on several, um, not necessarily the Christmas ones, but other Hallmark movies is an actress named Jen Lilly. Mm -hmm. um, Danica McKellar, who many people would know back playing Winnie Cooper years yep. ago on... Um, Growing Pains? Uh, Wonder Years. Wonder Years. Sorry, Growing Pains was... <laughs> that was Candace Cameron that was, Burr -Bray. that was Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron, whoops. <laughs> We're going all over the place, guys. Kid shows from six, years ago. Six degrees of Hallmark movies. Six degrees of Hallmark movies <laughs> and six go. degrees of other TV networks. Yeah. Um, but it's the truth. That's, yeah. that's where you go to. Um, other movies coming up. Um, I would say for sure, if you want to see something sort of amusing, I've seen the preview for A Shoe Addict's Christmas. Uh, we decided we hate the title. Oh, I really can't stand it. It's I, a stereotype title. It's a stereotype title, and it carries with it so many negative... A shoe addict. Like, I'm already thinking, oh, this woman is going to be obnoxious and obsessed with it. And I don't know anything about this character, but it just sets me up to be very unhappy with this character. And the th interesting thing is I did see the trailer for it. This is another uh, Candace Cameron Bure movie. But one of the major co-stars is Jean Smart. <sighs> okay. Oh. From Designing Women. Yep. I'm, I'm sure you all would recognize the name. Um, outstanding actress. And... It looks to be a little like a Scrooge story, which you really haven't seen on Hallmark. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I've seen one that's very Scrooge-like. And so it sounds like this one will have that touch of angst um, that we like to look for sometimes. Mm -hmm. If we want to have more than just the, I fall in love, there's 12 seconds I won't be in love, but we'll make sure we fall in love, <laughs> happening again. So there's that... Uh, then they even go into the holiday season, um, into the new year, and I'll let you read the title of that. A Midnight Kiss. A Midnight Kiss. <laughs> Which, they, again, like, no mystery what, <laughs> what's happening here in this movie. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as Rachel saw the title, she was like, that must be the New Year's Eve movie, and it's showing December 29th, so. I bet it ends at 12.01 <laughs> in, the, in the show. <laughs> I bet they kiss, credits. <laughs> 
Which will be lovely. It, it'll course. be lovely. It'll I'll be, be the fluffy moment. A little champagne wish moment. Yeah, exactly. A champagne wish moment. But if you need relaxation, and if you are not necessarily into meditation, but you need something hmm. to bring your blood pressure down, make sure you start watching the Hallmark channels. Hallmark channel, Hallmark movies and mysteries channel, 24 7. I kid you not. She's not kidding. 24 <laughs> 7. It's all Christmas, all the time. Basically, it looks like to the new year. So not yeah. even just to Christmas. They're just, they're going, they're playing. New ones, the old ones, ones from 15 years ago. They're all like in rotation. And they keep now. cycling them in. Yeah. yeah. They're showing gazillion movies a day. Every two hours, you got a new movie. DVR them, use them when you need them. If you know you're going to need, like, you're going to Take see, two Hallmark movies and call me in the morning. Right. You're going to see all the family, and they're not necessarily the ones you really wanted to be spending time with. Watch one before and have one ready when you come home. Yep. Download the app and watch them on your phone during yeah. your awkward Thanksgiving. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Oh, oh. Oh, that's sneaky. Yeah. That's yeah. sneaky. Well, Thanksgiving will have already happened, so during oh, those post-Thanksgiving, the visits, the family visits. Oh, yeah. The work parties that you have to be perfect. <laughs> Just hang out in the corner. <laughs> hang out in the corner. <laughs> Watching <sighs> homework movies. And that, that's what earphones are for. There you go. Especially the new Bluetooth ones that can hide under your hair. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tips and tricks for your <laughs> awkward holiday <laughs> gatherings. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy and have a wonderful holiday season, everybody. Rachel and I wish you happy holidays, whatever holidays you celebrate. And enjoy Hallmark and stay, stay happy. <laughs>